O thou before whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom nothing is hidden, once again we, your people, gather in this house to worship you in spirit and in truth. Grant that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts will be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Let the people of God say amen. amen. You may be seated. At this time, we acknowledge the presence not only of Tuskegee University, its faculty, staff, students, alumni, friends, but especially we take this opportunity to recognize our College of Arts and Sciences, of which Dr. Chanapatna Prakash serves as dean. We call upon him at this time to officially offer greetings and introductions in behalf of this college. Good morning. Thank you, Reverend Gray, and thank you, Reverend Thurman and Ms. Calhoun, for hosting the College of Arts and Science, which the College of Arts and Science truly embodies the spirit of Booker T. Washington's call for education of the mind, the body, and the hand. And with nearly 40% of all the teaching faculty here in the University College of Arts and Science is one of the largest colleges that are not only serves its 700 or so majors spread across uh, students spread across 16 areas, but also over 200 uh, undeclared majors, and as a found and one that offers the core foundational courses for all the Tuskegee students, and uh, we as a college. We take pride ourselves in coming together uh, in, in the true spirit of the families, the CAS family, for good times and over times when we grieve. But this is the first time we have come to celebrate spiritually. Thank you, Dr. Gray, for making this possible. And I, I just wanted to say a word of thanks to Dr. Russell, who has agreed to, to preach, to be the main preacher today, and Dr. Ankuma, who's going to be doing the welcoming, and the, uh, Dr. Jeffrey Fox, who is going to read the litany, but also many of the faculty who took time off to come here. I want to briefly recognize them. Dr. Bender, Dr. Fishkin, Dr. Tillman, Dr. Vincent, Dr. Endy, Dr. Collier, Ms. Shufford, Mr. Duncan, and if there are others that I missed, please forgive me. And we look forward to this rejoiceful day. Thank you very much. Let's give a round of applause to Dr. Prakash, the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, and certainly a professor and researcher in his own right. At this time, we will call forth Dr. Jeffrey Fox to lead us in our litany, which is found in our bulletins, followed by a selection from our faculty staff choir that is with us this morning, and we always certainly look forward to experiencing the spiritual through them, uh, followed by the morning prayer off offered by the chair of our Department of Communications, Modern Language and Philosophy, uh, Dr. Adaku Ankuma, Dr. Fox. Thank you, Reverend Gray. Lord, Lord, open unto me. Lord, Lord, open unto me. Open unto me, light my darkness. for thy fear. Open unto me hope for my despair. Open unto me peace for my eternal. Open unto me joy for my sorrow. Open unto me strength for my weakness. Open unto me wisdom for my confusion. Open unto me forgiveness. 
forgiveness for my sins. sins. Open unto me tenderness for my toughness. Open unto me love for my hates. Open unto me thyself for myself. Lord, Lord, open unto me. Thank you. Indeed, another round of applause for our faculty, staff, choir here at Tuskegee, and we invite others to join. Invite others. To, of course, there are one or two of you that uh, we encourage you to just make a joyful noise, but there are others of you we certainly encourage to, to join our faculty, staff, choir. At this time, our morning prayer from Dr. Adaku Ankuma. Thank you very much, Dean Gray. Shall we pray? <clears throat> Eternal God, we come into your presence this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts, and we glorify your holy name. 
Thank you that you have allowed us to see the second month of this new year and to be counted among the living at this time. Thank you for your grace and mercy, which have been abundant in our lives. We know that we are here at such a time as this because you have a purpose for our lives. You have a mission for us. And we thank you for the College of Arts and Science and the part that we are playing in carrying out this purpose. We commit our dean into your hands, the dean of the chapel, the other deans in this university, the administration. We remember the president and her recovery. And thank you for the progress that she's making. We remember all our faculty, our staff, and our students, Lord. Father, you call us to excellence, that everything that we do, we should do it to the glory of your name. And so I'm praying that we'll take that even seriously at this university. Lead and direct our administrators so that we'll go in the right direction. And Father, we pray also for the city in which we find our, our university. You'll be with the mayor and those in leadership that they will lead in the right direction. We pray, even in the words that we have just sung from James Johnson, that our hearts will not be drunk with the wine of this world, so much that we forget the one who created us and your purpose for creating us. We are praying that this year, even as we journey through the year, we'll make it our aim to draw closer to you and to know you and the power of your resurrection. We commit the speaker into your hands, even as he comes to deliver the word that you have laid on his heart this morning, that you anoint him, and that we will not be hearers of the word only, but doers of the world. This we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let the people of God say amen. amen. At this time, our ushers will come forward to do so, to serve us. And as they do so, let us be mindful that all that we have has indeed been entrusted to us. We are stewards of all of God's bounty. And we return now but a portion to serve God's kingdom in this place. You may serve us. We're grateful for volunteers from the College of Arts and Sciences who have served as our 
Ushers this morning, Ms. Nakisha Newton, Ms. Alexis Sorby, Ms. Deanna Williams, Fallon Brannan, and Kayla Greer, as well as Tifton Carter. In addition, we're grateful for the brothers of Kappa Alpha Psi, the Gamma Epsilon chapter, joining us for the start of Kappa Week. But let's stand together at this time. God, we offer you our thanks. May these, our gifts, represent the giving of our hearts, our minds, our voices, our hands, our very lives in the service of your kingdom in this place. In Christ's name we pray. You may be seated. Our speaker for the morning is Dr. Albert E. Russell, the son of Arthur Ray Russell, Sr., and Bernice Catherine Russell. He was born in Andrews Air Force Base, Maryland, before relocating to Mobile, Alabama, where he was reared by his mother, Bernice C. Russell, after his father passed away. He attended Williamson High School in Mobile, Alabama, where he finished third in his graduating class. Dr. Russell attended Alabama State University, received the, the Bachelor of Science degree in Chemistry in 1998. He received the university's President's Award for completing his degree at the top of his graduating class. After receiving his Bachelor of Science degree, Dr. Russell attended the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, where in 2003, he obtained the PhD degree with a concentration in organic chemistry. While at North Carolina, he received a GA, GEM's Consortium Graduate Fellowship from DuPont and was recognized as a Sloan Scholar by the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation. After completing his doctoral studies, uh, Dr. Russell completed a postdoctoral appointment at the University of Maryland. While at Maryland, he also worked as a graduate recruiter and helped to increase the presence of minorities in the chemistry department. He is currently department chair and associate professor of chemistry at Tuskegee University, where he teaches organic chemistry. Dr. Russell serves on several committees, serves as an academic advisor, and as a mentor to many of his students. His research involves designing and testing new compounds as chemotherapeutic agents, developing natural insecticides, developing natural product synthesis, and conversion of biomass into biofuel. Dr. Russell is a member of several professional organizations, and he's currently the pastor at Grace Community Church in Millbrook, Alabama. Grace is a Bible-based Christ-centered church where teaching and discipleship are at the forefront of ministry. He was a member and associate member at Free Will Missionary Baptist Church in Montgomery where he was a leader of the Enough is Enough Stop the Violence Ministry. He is a devoted single father and was married to the late lovely Dr. Tamika Daniel, Danielle Russell for 16 years. 
Danielle was an entrepreneur and author with two books, Sanctified and Still Standing and Divine Forgiveness. Dr. Russell is also the author of Agapao, that's a Greek word for love, Loving Your Wife the Way God Intended, which is available in Kindle uh, from Amazon.com. What isn't available from Amazon these days? <laughs> Dr. Russell also has two additional books in production, Pushing Through the Pain and God Seen, God Heard, a 365-day devotional. He is the father of two children, Donovan Khalil Russell and Genesis Kamil Russell. God, family, and career, that's how Dr. Russell's priorities are ordered. And after this next selection from our faculty staff choir, he will come forward with a message what goes down must come up. Let's give a round of applause to our speaker for the morning. He knows that 
I need to be brief, so he sent me a short message to give to you this morning. Amen. Amen. I thank God for this opportunity to be here. And I thank God for uh, Dr. Gray, who I see on a regular basis at, at Blue Seas. We both enjoy the same food. I uh, thank God for the wonderful introduction of Dr. Prakash, Dr. Nkuma, and the fantastic Dr. Fox. We thank God for you all, all of our uh, arts and sciences faculty, staff. Uh, we do thank God for you and thank God for this day. And thank God to the, the choir for ushering in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And Reverend Thurman, I don't know if he's, he's got to be close by, but I thank God. Thank you, brother, for all of the coordinating that you've done to make this happen. Uh, and I just want to thank God for even for my, my lady friend here, Leslie, and her daughter driving up all the way from Prattville. Uh, that's, a, that's about a 45-minute commute, so thank God for her. Amen. Amen. And we just thank God for the word. Yeah. I should have had them put on the flyer, bring your Bible. But in case you didn't, I brought mine. All right. So we'll be all right. Amen. 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 The, the, the word today is going to come from the book of Acts. The ninth chapter, and I'm only going to lift the eighth and ninth verse. And it did say on the flyer, guest preacher. Am I right? Yeah. Amen. I just want to make sure that I'm in the right place. Amen. They said guest preacher, not guest speaker. Okay. Right. Am I right about it? Yeah. Amen. I, I just want to make sure we're in the right place. Amen. It, it, Acts chapter 9, verse 8 says, Saul got up from the ground and Though his eyes were open, he could not see, he could see nothing. And leading him by the hand, they brought him into Damascus. And verse 9 says, and he was there three days without sight and neither ate nor drank. Amen. We're going to speak briefly today from the theme, what goes down must come up. When I sent the topic to Reverend Thurman, he, he quickly replied and says, I like that. What goes up must come down. And I said, no, sir. It's the opposite of that. And he says, that sounds like physics. Amen. And you've most likely heard the saying, what goes up must come down. And that is a, a, a physical phenomenon. It's true that if gravity is acting on a vertically accelerating object, that object is going to eventually stop and start to descend. Amen. And so today what we'll see from the text is that the converse is also true. But there's a caveat. Amen. The converse is what goes down must come up, but there's a caveat because if it goes down, in order for it to come up, it has to be a God-directed process. Amen. It's almost the opposite effect of gravity, see, because gravity presses down, but God raises up. Are y'all with me this morning? Amen. Amen. See, if, if we just throw a ball in the air and it comes down, we can write that off. Oh, that's just physics physics that's just gravity doing its work but when something goes down there's no guarantee that it's going to come up right. amen there's no guarantee that it's going to come back up unless God raises it up amen and I can tell you right now that with God what goes down must come up y'all stay with me this morning now and pray for me now so I can get out of your way Amen. In the text, we see, first of all, that Paul, the, the Apostle Paul, was, was broken for a purpose. Paul, on the road to Damascus, Paul had a letter from the Sanhedrin. He had a letter to go and persecute Christians. And on his way to Damascus, Paul meets Jesus, and Jesus asks him point blank, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? I want you to understand this is not the earthly Jesus talking to him. This is King Jesus talking to him. This is the risen, the ascended Jesus talking to Paul. And I always wondered why Jesus had to talk to Paul personally. And, and, and when we think about his personality, we think about how Paul was so erudite and so arrogant. It, it, it couldn't be just any old evangelist going to Paul saying, Paul, you need to stop what you're doing. Jesus had to come himself and say, why are you persecuting me? Because Saul had a, a past of imprisoning Christians and, and persecuting Christians. He even stood and watched Stephen die. Yeah. Held coats of the people who were gonna throw stones so the coat wouldn't get in the way of their trajectory. Mm. Amen. And not only did Jesus strike him down, he struck him blind. 
Amen. The blindness was a symptom of Paul's arrogance. God broke him to strip him. Are y'all with me this morning? God broke him to strip him of his arrogance, of his pride, of his lustful power, but God never took away his zeal because the breaking was also for the making. And so he leave his zeal he, because he would need that zeal to eventually preach the gospel. Amen. God broke Paul down to make him vulnerable, to make him dependent, uh, not on himself, but on God, because at this point in his life, he was dependent, amen, on his own stature. How many of you know God sometimes has to break us to make us? Yeah. How many of you have been on the potter's wheel before? Yeah, Amen. Every now and then that, 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 that vessel will get a warp in it. So we have to get back on the potter's wheel so God can smooth it out. Yeah, this is my 15th year at Tuskegee University. It seems like a lifetime. <laughs> Amen. And I've seen Tuskegee hit some low points in my tenure here. Are y'all with me? But because the hand of God is upon us, every time we hit a low point, God raises us up. Every time we hit a low point, there's a purpose for that low point. Amen. In those low moments, that's when God can prune us. Amen. I remember being a young man and my mom would take me and she would cut my hair. She had to wrap me up in a sheet so I wouldn't squirm too much. Amen. I wouldn't sit still for her to groom me because I had more important things to do like play in the mud or, or go ride my bike. And so sometimes God has to get us all the way down to nothing in order to do maintenance on us. Amen. He has to put us back on that potter's wheel and rejuvenate us and refresh us. And we experience these moments of temporary blindness so that we can see what God is doing in the spiritual realm. Amen. With our physical eyes, we see our accolades. We see people patting us on the back. We see, amen, the stacks of degrees. We see the books and the publications. We see the praises, people singing our praises. And, and, and what we don't see is that we've become puffed up and we become haughty. So every now and then God has to break us in order to make us. He has to get us out of that haughty spirit in order to use us for his glory because sometimes we forget where we came from yes. we forget that there's one maker who made us all amen secondly God gives help for the journey so Paul is coming he's coming Saul is coming to Damascus and Saul is struck down and Jesus approaches him Jesus convicts him Jesus confronts him and now on his journey, there had to be some help, see, because now he's blind and he cannot see. And so God sent a man to get Paul named Ananias. And Ananias was not unfamiliar with Paul's background. Ananias knew that Paul, as, as Muhammad Ali said, was a bad man. Amen. He had a reputation for the vicious persecution of Christians. So Ananias says to God, God, are you sure you want me to go and get this one? Can I help you this morning? Some of you sitting in the seat this morning are the help. Amen. So, some of you are someone's help. Amen. And God has already told you what you need to be doing, but you're still sitting on your hands. As if he didn't say anything. It was because of the obedience of Ananias that he went anyway. Are you following? Amen. And so if God has given you a mission to help or to do whatever, you got to go anyway. Because had he just looked at the circumstances, he would have stayed in his home. But he was obedient unto God because he was the help that God ordained for Paul's journey. A lot of times now, let me look at the flip side of this. A lot of times when we're down like Paul was, we don't accept the help. Amen. We don't need outside people coming in and telling us how to run the university. Maybe we do. We don't need any consultation from such and such firm. We got this. Maybe we don't. 
Maybe we're in that place so that the help can come in and do what God ordained and bring us back to where God wants us to be. But sometimes when we're down, we see folks as trying to get in our business. We, we don't want to open up to them because we're afraid, amen, that they may look down on us because we're down. But if the help is God-ordained, not only are they going to look down, but they're also going to help you up. Amen. God always sends help. Did he not send Michael to help Gabriel fight the prince of Persia? Did he not send a whole army of angels when Elisha took his little servant out? Amen. And they were getting ready to fight the Arameans. And Elijah said, God, open his eyes so he can see that there's more with us than there are with them. Did he not send the captain of the Lord's army to help Joshua? God sends help. We just have to accept the help. We can't be so powerful and so hardy that we turn away the, the vessel that God sent to pull us out. Finally, listen, now God raises up those whom he humbles. Verse 17 says, so Ananias departed and entered the house and after laying his hands on him, he said, brother Saul, called him brother. Same one who had come to Damascus to throw him in prison. He called him brother. Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road by which you were coming, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And in verse 18, it says this, and immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he regained his sight. He got up and was baptized, and he took food and was strengthened. In the hands of God, what goes down must come up. Are y'all with me today? Jesus said it himself. He says, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it can't bear much fruit. In the hands of God, what goes down must come up, and it comes up with a purpose. Amen. God told Ananias, this is my chosen instrument. This is the one, this is my vessel that I'm going to use. That's what the word instrument literally means in the Greek, a vessel. And not only was Paul's vessel shattered, now God was getting ready, listen now, to reassemble the vessel for his own glory. I want you to think about your own life and the times that you've been down and the times that God has taken your shattered vessel and reassembled it for his own glory. Think about the times when Tuskegee was on the verge of, oh, we may be closed next year. And God took the vessel and reassembled it for his own glory. Well. Ananias went in obedience. And the Bible says because, of, because he went and when he touched Paul, something like scales fell off of his eyes. Do you see what happens when we accept the help that God sends? God knows exactly what he's doing. He knows exactly what we need. Just like the choir just sang. And those scales were like platelets. If you've ever seen in medieval times the armor that a, a knight would wear, those little pieces that were knitted together, that was, those were the, that was the description of what was on Paul's eyes. And they fell off and he was able to see. But now he saw from a different perspective. Now he saw the world the way God ordained him to see the world. And every now and then, God has to break us and strip away our baggage and strip away our hang-ups and all of these other things that keep us from seeing the world the way God intends for us to see the world. Has he changed any of your perspectives in here this morning? See, I can speak on that because I've been broken down. And I'm not ashamed to say that I've been broken down. I'm not ashamed to say that there were scales over my own eyes but I've had my perspective changed. I've had my world rocked before. I've, I've been down to the point where I didn't know that I was going to get up. But then but God brought me forth as pure gold. Thank you. And he'll do the same thing for you. And many of you in here, he's already done that. And he'll still do it again. Because what goes down must come up. Amen. Paul got up because what goes down has to come up. Paul was 
baptized. Now the persecutor has become the brother of the saints. Paul ate and got his strength because he had work to do. Amen. Amen. Now we are in Sunday service. And I am the guest preacher. <laughs> and I can't leave you without telling you about one who went down and came up. Are yes. oh, y'all with me today? I, I, I can't leave you without talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, one who came down from his throne in the heavenly realms. I, I can't leave you without telling you about Jesus who came down the birth canal of his mother, Mary came down to the temple to reason with the religious leaders and went down into the water and was baptized by his cousin John the Baptist. I can't leave you without telling you something about this man named Jesus. Jesus who went down to the people whom he ministered to, sinners and tax collectors and prostitutes and adulterers, but he didn't go down to press them down. He went down to raise them up. Are y'all with me this morning? I can't leave you this morning without telling you about a man named Jesus who went down the hill from Gethsemane after being arrested and went down to the high priest and went down to Pilate and was ordered to be crucified. I can't leave you this morning without telling you that after he was ordered to be crucified, he went up a hill called Calvary and laid down on the ground and was nailed to a cross and then lifted up so that he might draw all men unto himself. I know there's a witness in the house this morning and before the sun went down, Jesus was taken down and laid down in a borrowed tomb. But early on the third day morning, what went down had to come up. Early on the third day, what went down into the tomb, bruised, battered, and worn, got up, glorified with all power in his hand. Not only did he get up, he stayed up, and he's still up, making intercession for the saints. You might be down right now. You might be down on, on a bed of affliction. You may be down because you think you're not going to survive Tuskegee. But I have to tell you this morning that in the hands of God. What goes down must come up. God bless you and God keep you.
Let's take the opportunity again to thank our faculty, staff, choir for the music ministry that we've had this morning. Thank our musicians, including our pianist, uh, Mrs. Brenda Schubert. And for those, uh, for those of you who do not know, she's, she's the Reverend Brenda Schubert. And we also express our gratitude, of course, for Dr. Wayne Anthony Barr. Uh, very quickly, we take the opportunity to once again thank all of you uh, representing our College of Arts and Sciences, of course, uh, our dean, but our faculty, our staff, and of course, our stu let's have all students from the College of Arts and Sciences to stand. We'll take the opportunity to say that uh, uh, that there it is to you Sunday today at the Greater St. Mark Missionary Baptist Church uh, where uh, Dr. C.P. Noble serves as the pastor, our Golden Voices Concert Choir, uh, including our musicians and Dr. Barr will, will be journeying there momentarily following this worship service. Uh, the Dean of the Chapel will serve as the speaker there this morning. And on Friday, this coming Friday, we will, of course, observe our annual George Washington Carver Convocation uh, scheduled for Friday, February the 7th at 11.10. Uh, 11.10 this Friday here in the chapel where our speaker will be a biologist, faculty member, scholar, researcher, uh, Dr. Clayton Yates. Are there any visitors with us this morning? If so, we invite you to stand. By visitors, we mean those visiting from the outside, not those of you who are on campus and just don't come. Uh, are there visitors with us this morning? If not, we're still delighted to see each of you and all of you. And uh, those of you, College of Arts and Sciences, feel free to share, of course, on the special Sundays of uh, each of our colleges and schools. That's right. Each of our colleges and schools here at Tuskegee has been assigned a special Sunday. It's there in your bulletin, and uh, you're certainly invited to share with us on those occasions. Is there anything else that should claim our attention, uh, Dr. Barr or anyone? Just next Sunday is our spiritual concert. At 4 o'clock. Yes, on the next Sunday, which would be February the 9th, at 4 o'clock p.m., uh, an event that we look for on an annual basis, certainly with uh, significant uh, historical significance, uh, our annual spirituals concert. Our annual spirituals concert next Sunday at 4 o'clock p.m. here in the chapel. If there's nothing else that should claim our attention at this time, let's all stand for our closing hymn Hymn 391, I Will Trust in the Lord. Thank you. 
And now may the love of God the Father and the Mother, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us all now and forevermore, world without end. Super Bowl enthusiasm.